Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. In tonight's video, I want to clearly explain the upcoming Ethereum hard fork. Now, I know there's been a lot of confusion around hard forks um, after Bitcoin forked recently and resulted in Bitcoin Cash. And obviously, a lot of new users in this space weren't around during the last hard fork that resulted in Ethereum Classic. So hopefully, by the end of this presentation, you're going to clearly understand how this is all going to unfold. So Metropolis is the third of four planned upgrades for the Ethereum network. So the first version was Frontier in July 2015. We're currently in Homestead since March last year. And now we're approaching the Metropolis upgrade, which is going to be done in two parts starting today. So basically, Ethereum's had no shortage of interest, but one of the bottlenecks has been making a user-friendly version of this technology. So if you're not sufficient in Solidity coding, it has been a bit of a bottleneck to people to be able to use this technology and create their own dApps and implement them in ways that can improve their business. And with all those big companies we've seen join the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance, this is going to allow them to use a more user-friendly version of this technology. So basically... Vitalik has said that this is going to be a more efficient, secure, and robust infrastructure for decentralized dApps and developers. So to start off with, this is just going to be deployed on the Rompstand test network. And as I said, in two parts. So the first is going to be Byzantium, and the second part is Constantinople. The first part is going to deploy at block 1.7 million, which is going to be in a few hours' time at time of recording on this test network. And we have these Ethereum test networks, which just allow for developers to iron out any bugs before deploying their technology on the main Ethereum network. So the second part doesn't have a set date yet, Constantinople, but no doubt it'll follow in a few weeks if we haven't got any hiccups. And if all goes to plan, we'll then see... Ethereum deploy the hard fork metropolis on their main network around October 9th, I've said at this stage. So if you want a more detailed analysis of all the Ethereum improvement protocols that are going to be included in these hard forks, please read this post by Ethereum Foundation member Alex where he goes into them in greater detail. I'm just going to cover three of the more relevant upgrades that I think for the average user, but some further improvements include lighter clients, security, and quantum hacking. But I just want to dive into th the three that I think are most relevant for that, the average user. So the first is privacy. So implementing ZSnarks or zero-knowledge proofs, the same technology that Zcash runs on, which is basically going to allow for anonymous transactions. And we all know the importance of privacy. And these days, um, if you're sufficient and you know how to use these blockchain explorers, there's still a degree of being able to track transactions through the blockchain. So being able to do transactions privately is obviously really exciting. The second part is the delaying of the difficulty bomb or ice age. So what we see here is the hash rate increasing as the more and more computers join the network to mine. But what we see here is the acceleration of the difficulty away from the hash rate. And normally these two for most cryptocurrencies adjust, so they run in parallel. But Ethereum is programmed to get exponentially more difficult to encourage the switch over to proof of stake. So part of this network upgrade is going to be switching over from entirely proof of work, the computers doing the mining, over to proof of stake where you can stake Ethereum and lock that up, show that you've got the network's best interests at heart and you will be rewarded the same as miners get rewarded Ethereum for solving blocks basically. So that leads into the next part, which is the reduction in the block reward. So at the moment, each block you solve, you get five Ether and that's going to be reduced to three. So all things remaining equal, this is going to reduce that supply by about 40%. So Basic economics, supply and demand should say that this should be very favorable for the Ethereum price moving forward, all things remaining equal. So I guess that leads into exactly what happened around that last hard fork. So I know a lot of people want to know if this is going to result in two coins like we saw with Bitcoin. So around early last year, okay, we were seeing the... A bit of debate about the Ethereum hard fork after the DAO got hacked. So the DAO is basically 
Think of it as the second ICO. And after Digex, the first ICO sold out very quickly. A lot of people were keen to jump on board the Dow and they raised $150 million. Now, there was a flaw in their code that allowed hackers to drain some Ethereum and they were able to steal $50 million before the, the white hack coders were able to step in and, and res rescue the, the Ethereum. But basically, this saw a lot of debate about should we reverse this attack and undo the hack? And, you know, a majority of people said yes, but there was a small crowd that said no. If you're going to build a blockchain where code is law, that should be immutable. You shouldn't be able to undo that. And that crowd are the crowd that created Ethereum Classic. Now, I'm of the opinion that, that by returning the funds, the stolen funds to the users, that was the right thing to do. And I only support Ethereum, okay? So I know there's a crowd out there that think code is law and that's the kind of Ethereum Classic and how that all came about. So what we saw after that hack was a sharp decline in price from you know the $20 range all the way down to $6. But once we had that Ethereum hard fork play out in March there and the network was all chugging along nicely again, we obviously saw that huge run up in price from around $10 all the way up to $400. So I don't want to speculate about what the hard fork could do for the price, but I think just common sense sort of says all things staying equal, if you make a network that's safer, better to use for the average person, it's going to allow for that mass adoption to accelerate and you're decreasing the supply and demand, I think there's every chance that the Ethereum price could see some real appreciation and move upwards. So Obviously, I'll cover the Serenity hard fork, which is probably at least a year away at this stage when that comes, and that'll be the final upgrade to the Ethereum network. But I hope, hopefully, I've clearly explained that Metropolis hard fork. This is not a contentious hard fork. It's not controversial. It's planned, so very, very different to the Bitcoin hard fork that we saw unfold recently where there's a lot of debate about how to scale the Bitcoin network. So you won't have two coins. There's going to be one Ethereum. Keep an eye out on that test network to see how it's all going and obviously we'll read the news headlines about exactly when it's going to be deployed on the Ethereum mainnet. So I hope that I've explained that clearly. Please give this video a like, share these videos around, subscribe if you haven't already and as always, thanks for tuning in guys. Cheers.